Today's video is going to focus on chapters 8 and 9, which are addition reactions. Addition reactions are the opposite of elimination reactions. We have them for both alkenes and alkynes, where you have um, something XY that's added across a pi bond to give you new sigma bonds. And that XY can be something, two different things, or it can be the same thing. The first reaction we'll discuss is hydro hydrohalogenation. Here we have hydrobromic acid, or we could also use hydrochloric acid to add across the pi bond. And what we see here is a Markovnikov addition where the bromine is on the more substituted carbon atom. Why is this? That's because when you have the formation of the intermediate, the hydrogen atom, the new hydrogen atom goes on the least substituted carbon atom so that the carbocation can be more stabilized on the more substituted carbon atom. Then in your second step, bromine attacks that carbocation to give you the more substituted product. This is the same reaction for alkenes. Notice that those bromine atoms have gone, I mean for alkynes, the bromine atoms have gone on that more substituted carbon atom. Beware of rearrangements with these reactions. Notice that the product is not what you'd expect without a rearrangement, which would be the following. This is not what forms. How do we get this product? Well, the carbocation that forms is on the more substituted carbon. You have your hydrogen on the least substituted carbon, and then you form the chloride ion. But the chloride ion doesn't interact quite yet. Before you get the chloride ion interacting, then you get a shift of one of the methyl groups onto that more substituted carbon onto the sorry onto the less substituted carbon and you form this carbocation now the chlorine can attack and form your more substituted product you want to be aware of racemization in these reactions. That here we have both the E, the sorry, we have both the R and S um, enantiomers are formed when there's a possibility of them being formed. And that's because the intermediate that you go through, this carbocation, is trigonal planar. So the chlorine, chlorine or chloride ion can attack. When it attacks, it's going to attack from either side, the top or the bottom, and that gives you both the, the R and the S enantiomers. Next is acid catalyzed hydration. This is the same mechanism as in the hydrohalogenation. We have a strong acid adding to that alkene. We form the more substituted carbocation. And then in our second step, water attacks. And just like the 
other reaction, the hydrohalogenation, we have to be aware of rearrangement and racemization. When we go to alkynes, the case is not the same. We don't end up adding water twice across the alkyne. Let's discuss why that is. In the first step of our mechanism, we do get the addition of water across, or we do get the addition of water across the pi bond. So we put our hydrogen at the less substituted carbon, and then we formed water, and water attacks the carbocation, and we get this intermediate, which is called an enol. And what happens to the enol is a tautomerization reaction. We've protonated that alkene to form a carbocation. There's a new hydrogen there. Then let's erase this hydrogen and draw it again with a bond because we're going to break that bond in the next step by using water Actually, that's not the arrow I meant to draw. Let's draw that arrow directly to form the pi bond, and that's what gives you your product. For hydroboration oxidation, you don't need to know the mechanism for this. You just get the, more, the less substituted product, the anti-Markovnikov. The key in intermediate here is this one, which ends up being the product of step one. And that is what reacts with sodium hydroxide and water to give you the um, anti-Markovnikov product. And actually, if we wanted to be more correct, the intermediate is actually this. Not quite. Here we go parentheses in the wrong place. For the alkyne, we don't have the addition twice. It's, it's the same case as in the um, hydration reaction. We are going to form the less substituted enol, and that undergoes a tautomerization to form the less substituted um, aldehyde. In catalytic hydrogenation, we're just adding palladium, I mean, adding hydrogen across the pi bond with a palladium catalyst. You um, end up having the alkene interacting with the palladium surface in the same direction and that allows hydrogen to come in um, also bound to that surface and do a syn addition 
So when we do a syn addition, what I mean is that we've got hydrogen adding to the same side, which we can see in this reaction, that hydrogen has two dashes there, and the methyl groups have two wedges. The reaction is the same for alkynes. We're adding hydrogen across that pi bond twice. Here we don't have stereochemistry, so we can draw them without wedges and dashes. In halogenation, we have the anti-addition of bromine across a pi bond. Why is it anti? Well, in the first step of this reaction mechanism, we have three arrows. We're forming the bromonium cation. Then bromine attacks either one of those carbon atoms to give you the um, dibromide compound plus the enantiomer, and I'm actually going to redraw this to give you the enantiomer that's shown there. When you have an alkyne, bromine adds twice. Actually, I should write excess here, or two equivalents. And the next reaction is hydro, hy, hydrohalon formation. Here we're again going through the bromonium ion intermediate. and water attacks and gives you the halohydrin and it's an antiomer. Why doesn't bromine add twice here when we have two bromines? Well this is because when the solubility of bromine is really low in water. I think it's like 3% so the amount of water present is going to be quite an excess compared to the bromide ion that is formed. And it's going to be more abundant, and therefore that's why it reacts with that intermediate instead of bromine reacting with that intermediate. Antihydroxylation is a fun reaction, and whenever I say fun, then that means it's harder. Here we're reacting with a per- acid, which is this functional group where we've got an oxygen-oxygen bond, so it's like a carboxylic acid, but it has an extra oxygen. Let's draw the mechanism of this reaction, which has more arrows in the first step than, than most reactions we do. I'm going to draw an R group to skip that drawing the phenyl group. This is how we form our epoxide ring. And here we have a syn addition, but I call this antidihydroxylation, meaning that, oh,
that we have water adding um, or high, two, two hydroxy groups adding across the pi bond anti. And why is that? That's because in our second step where we add water, then we're going to attack one of these carbon atoms and invert our stereochemistry and that gives us our product plus the enantiomer. And if you hold on just one minute, I have to attend to my cat. Dihydroxylation is one of those reactions you don't need to know the mechanism for, but you need to know the key intermediate involves, let's see, let's actually draw the first step of that mechanism. You just don't need to know the second step. With osmium tetroxide, you can also do this with potassium permanganate. If anyone has trouble seeing this green color, let me know so I don't use it in the future. So you get this intermediate, and then when you react with water, then you're going to break both of those bonds um, to osmium. But these bonds are already intact with the sin geometry, so that's how they end up staying sin. Oxidative cleavage is one of those reactions you don't need to know the mechanism for, but the easiest thing to do is draw a squiggle through your pi bond and then add oxygens to both sides of those. And I just draw this with the ring like it was arranged and then um, make it a zigzag so it's pretty. When you have an alkyne the difference is when you're breaking this pi bond that you get two carboxylic acids. The last reaction we'll discuss is the alkylation of alkynes. This is a simple acid-base reaction followed by a substitution reaction. Here we have sodium amide as our base. That deprotonates our alkyne that has a pKa of 25. Note that ammonia has a pKa of 38. So that means its conjugate base is strong enough to deprotonate that alkyne. We get the acetylide anion plus ammonia. And then in our second step, we have either a primary or a secondary, or in this case, a methyl halide or other good leaving group. And we want to use that lone pair to attack our carbon. Bromine departs, and we get... Um, a dye substituted alkyne. Those are all the reactions that you need to know for chapters 8 and 9. Um, I want to encourage you to review 8.13, 8.14, and 9.11, which are on synthetic strategies. And really what's important, if you only read one chapter in this book before we get started with chapter 12, read chapter 11. On synthesis. 
Here you can ignore anything you see with peroxides and bromine. Usually the bromine is written on top. And you can ignore NBS and light. So other than these reactions that you need to ignore, chapter 11 is a great chapter for you to read to get all of your reactions together.